Nawe'i is an Ojibwe word meaning the center, and the mission of the center school is to offer transformative education grounded in indigenous language and life ways, provided in a supportive urban setting. I guess for me, it's really about addressing kind of the unique needs of our urban Native adolescent kids. Um, just because I think there is an extra layer of marginalization um, and isolation and uh, that sense of belonging. And I think that this school and this type of an environment and these kinds of programs really help with these kids um, because they're kind of unseen in the general public and their needs are so great. It's a group approach, it's not just one thing, you know, it's, it's our culture, it's our language, it's our elders, it's, you know, our language teachers. It's the support that we can provide them that they're not going to get otherwise. They need that worldview that is so much more, as I see it, coherent uh, than, uh, than the dominant worldview of mainstream America. I feel like uh, they really need to to be better grounded, and they need to know who they are. So repeat after me: Ani, Ani, Ejene, Ejene, Kazo, Kazo, Yon, Yon. Second one, second one: Awene, Awene, Kedudem, Kedudem. If you just say Awene by itself, it means who? The challenging part of teaching a language is being able to pronounce the words. The words are a lot of syllables, and it could become a tongue twister at time. So yeah, and it's also in the Guinness Book of World Records as one of the most complex languages on, on, on the planet. So I do it step by step and, and, and the kids really like it. We rely heavily on the Ojibwe language for the foundation of our culture because with every ceremony we do, we're calling on the spirits of that ceremony, but those spirits we're calling are our ancestors. And our ancestors, that's the language they spoke was the Ojibwe language. So if we want to communicate with them, you know, we have to do it through the Ojibwe language. I mean, we, we could speak it with, in English. Elders say, like, speak through the heart, you know, if you want to, if you can't speak your language, speak through the heart, you know, like when you want to do an offering. But they said that's not always going to work. We can't keep doing that forever, you know. In order for, for us to become, for our, our people to unite and become a, a powerful nation once again, we have to bring back the language. Because once we bring back the language, and then we'll be able to bring back the full power of our ceremonies. If you go back through history, um, and you go back far enough back, at, at one point the entire, the entire world is indigenous. The culture of the entire world is indigenous. That is, everybody understands what we would call the original instructions. Everybody understands how to live on this planet and survive you know, for, a, for a very long period of time, for, for, forever perhaps. With colonization over the last three, five thousand years perhaps, leading up to today, we have only small pockets of indigenous people left in the world who really still understand those original instructions. And so what indigenous cultures have is that knowledge of how to live here. And not only that, but, but deeper than that, there's a, an understanding of the true nature of the universe as opposed to uh, this artificial idea of what it is that's been kind of superimposed on people's consciousness. That we feel like immersion is the best way to teach language. I also think it's the best way to share uh, life ways and worldview. So I'm hoping that uh, with enough people here who understand it, then the kids can be immersed in a culture that provides them a unique learning experience that's empowering and helps them to reclaim what is theirs, their culture, their language. We applied for full-time language teachers when we wrote the grant. My grant writer actually asked me, why would you want full-time language teachers when they only teach one or two classes a day, maybe three, you know, out of a six-hour day? And I said, well, the other piece is just as important. We need those teachers here to teach the non-native teachers how to incorporate language and culture into their curriculum. I co-teach with other teachers. I teach uh, five classes throughout the day. One of them I do a weather class with the science teacher. So I'm teaching them how to, uh, to watch the skies, to know what the weather will be like the next coming days. And we're, and we're using a lot of Ojibwe language terminology. He's really fun and he listens and he's He's really understanding on stuff, and he doesn't like, you know, he doesn't like put too much pressure on somebody. Like, you know, he helps out more than, you know, just throw stuff at you. 
I also uh, pay attention to their everyday lives, you know, are they okay, are they happy, are they sad, you know. So when I know everyone's, when everyone's having a, a good day, you know, I try to have a lot of fun. When someone's upset, I'll try to be careful, like with this one, you know. With a strong commitment to alternative education and serving American Indian youth, Nawai'i Center School evolved from an informal drop-in service to what it is today, an alternative urban high school focusing on American Indian youth in grades 7 through 12. We receive about half of our needed funds from Minneapolis Public Schools. The other half that we need in order to operate a program like this, we have to go out and fundraise for. So it's, it, it gets tough to provide a quality program here. Because we found out that we need social workers, we need therapists, we need chemical abuse prevention specialists, and we need more than just the four core subject area teachers, we need language teachers too. So when you add all that up, it adds up to about twice the budget of, uh, of, a, of, you know, of what the district can provide for us for, the, uh, for that operation. I want the public to understand how great the need is. I want the public to know that we're here, you know, 78% roughly of the indigenous kids in this country live in urban areas. And yet they're the most invisible. The Nawai'i Center School has much to celebrate for obvious and more subtle signs of success. When people are looking for success, they're looking for easily quantifiable events, you know, attendance, uh, grade point averages and things like that. But what we found is something that isn't so easy to quantify and that is real success is when kids or young people um, believe in themselves, you know, they, they become empowered, they self-actualize. That's what we're really looking for, is for people to say, to believe that there's nothing that they can't do. This labor of love involves teachers, counselors, and a community of people committed to the success of a new generation of indigenous people. We're very dedicated, passionate, serious about the work we do here, that we really care about these kids, and we're trying to provide everything they need. Um, I think the other piece, though, is just that there's a reciprocal responsibility. The families and the students and the staff here must share. And it's important for people to understand that a school like this doesn't survive long without involving everyone within the community.